and shake your booties for black girl nerds. Paul and Carrie. Hey, Catalina. Pleasure. Hey, Catalina. Today. Our pleasure. Yeah. So, Carrie, ladies first. Uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters is such a classic franchise. What was your experience like on set and getting the call that you're going to be in it to really expand this universe? Well, I was really surprised to be called um, among many reasons because a lot of my work has been very dramatic. And so Jason Reitman did his due diligence and called all the directors I worked with to ask if I was funny. And then he called me to come in and read a secret script. And of course, uh, I came to discover that it was the Ghostbusters movie. Um, I was uh, floored to be invited, but more importantly, the script was really good. The relationships were really specific. Uh, the character was interesting for me to take on. Um, I just was really impressed with the way he was moving it forward. And um, it was an unequivocal yes for me. And then, you know, Paul Rudd came on board and my life got even better. <laughs> ah. <Nice. laughs> Paul, you actually play a teacher who reminds me so much of a chemistry teacher I had in high school. <laughs> and I'm just yeah? Wondering, we played Cujo your... for you? Yes, it was great. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your inspiration uh, for Mr. Gruberson? Oh man, I you know I didn't I didn't really have any teacher specifically that I you know based the guy on or thought about really. It, um, I did have some pretty great teachers too, um, and I think I also had some teachers that didn't really care that much, sadly. Uh, but you know. <laughs> Same could be said for all of us, I bet. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I just was, I think, liked the idea of a guy, a teacher showing up and on the first day of school telling the students that, you know, he wasn't really into it and that he knew they weren't really into school. So let's just watch this cool movie. And then he just put on a movie and he went back into his office to just kind of work on the stuff that interested him. Like that already made me laugh and I liked it. But then there was this cool girl that kind of walks into my office who's really bright and science minded and is asking interesting, intelligent questions. And that part of Gruberson that doesn't um, talk down to kids, but is really kind of charged by uh, people's curiosity and um, and you know, and interest and um, uh, enthusiasm that like their kid has, like that, that he doesn't talk down to him, that, he, that he embraces it and he encourages it. And he's kind of can probably considers himself on the same footing. Uh, it just seemed like a really fun character to play. Plus, I mean, come on, it's Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie, what kind Harry of Coon, mother man. would you say, Callie, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mother would you say Callie is and how much of yourself did you bring to the role? Well, she's a flawed one. I think I brought that. Um, <laughs> I think we're all, you know, none of us are perfect. We're all doing our best. And, you know, for me, the stakes for her are really real, you know, economically. I grew up in a family where both my parents worked. I have uh, three brothers and one sister. So I have a big family and it was, you know, sometimes kind of tough. And so I respected that she was, you know, she had that kind of Midwestern resourcefulness and maybe some of that distraction as well. And I love that Jason wrote, a, she feels like a real person, you know, she's got her own, she's got her own issues and she's trying to make her own life. And so they gave her this opportunity to have this great flirtation, you know, this kind of awkward flirtation with um, Gary Gruberson in the film. And, you know, a woman trying to find her identity in the midst of being known as a mother, I think is a really real thing. And it's certainly a real thing for me. I mean, I now have two kids. I've got a 13 week old baby and a three and a half year old. And it's really hard to make time to, you know, for myself in my life. And, and I really related to that part of Callie. I think it was really, really smart and gives us the stakes we need in the film to invest in the family. Absolutely. Well, it has been such a pleasure getting to chat with both of you today. Uh, best of luck with Ghostbusters Afterlife. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kat. Thanks. Lena, thanks for talking to us. Jason, hey, Kat, how's it going? Pleasure. Good, thank you. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife is great. So, thank Ah, you. thank you. <laughs> there was a pause. I didn't know which way that was going to go. <laughs> no, I was trying to think of a, a bigger word, but no, great, you. fantastic, awesome. Thank yes. you very much. 
I mean, the script alone is fantastic. What were some of the challenges you faced kind of bringing this all together? I mean, honestly, I think the greatest challenge I overcame was my own fear, my own lack of confidence, you know, my own thoughts that uh, yeah, I was not supposed to make a Ghostbusters film. And uh, once I stopped being about my own fears and started being about how much fun it would be to see the guys put the flight suits back on, to see the car fly around the corner one more time, to see these young people pick up proton packs and blast them and give the audience the experience of feeling what it would like to discover that equipment themselves, then it became really joyful uh, and, uh, and I had a great time. That's great. I will say one of the things I loved about the characters was really, it was that feeling of, I would totally act like that if I got <laughs> to, to drive or wear this proton pack. Absolutely. Uh, what was the thought process about bringing back so many iconic moments and Easter eggs from the original? I mean, look, we wanted to make this movie like work for whether you, this is the, you've seen Ghostbusters a hundred times or this is the first time you're seeing a Ghostbusters movie. We wanted this movie to work for you. But if you are a big Ghostbusters fan, we want this to feel like the original recipe. We all know grandma's recipe. Like we know when it's right. And it, you know, when you see Ecto-1 and we wanted it to be a hundred percent correct. And you see the proton pack, we scanned and lidar you know, one of the original packs that we pulled out of the Sony archives just to make sure it was dead on accurate. Uh, these things matter. Even the sounds, the sounds of the proton pack, the PKE meter, the siren on Ecto-1, we know those, become, those sounds become ingrained in your brain. There are parts of our childhood and they got to be right. Very true. Very true. I could definitely feel the nostalgia. And I think everyone in the theater with me did as well. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and you know, you have a pretty amazing cast. Yeah. And I'm wondering what was the casting process like? Did you have people in mind for certain roles or well, how did that go? Well, I mean, I certainly wanted to work with Paul Rudd and I wanted to work with Carrie Coon. I mean, they're just brilliant and hilarious and I felt really lucky. Paul Rudd's the kind of guy they would have probably cast in the original Ghostbusters had been you know, the right age at the time. And then these kids, I, you know, I was really intimidated to find four young actors who could put on the flight suit and be funny and feel legit and be smart. And lo and behold, we found these four actors who were just so talented and they felt so right. And they were constantly teaching me uh, about the kinds of things they would say at their generation. It made me feel a little bit old, but uh, I just adored them. They love each other. Their chemistry was great. And they made coming to set so fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love podcast and Phoebe's relationship. That They're is so great, right? The golden nugget of this film. <laughs> I mean, it's so cool, right? Because we got McKenna, who is just, she's in everything right now, right? She just got nominated for an Emmy. She's been in like so many different miniseries and stuff. And then you got Logan, who's never been in a single thing. And the <laughs> fact that they can op, you know, occupy the screen at the same time and balance together and have fun with each other. Um, it, it, that's really the kind of joy that this movie is all about. It's, it's about whether or not you are an expert Ghostbuster or putting it on for the first time, you feel at home here. Mm -hmm. And I got to talk about these jokes. Who, who wrote those jokes? Was that you? Like they're totally Oh, Phoebe's jokes? jokes? The Phoebe's jokes. So it started in the script. We knew we wanted, so, you know, Phoebe Spengler is someone who struggles to communicate with the world. She's just like her grandfather. She feels so much, but she doesn't know how to express it. And she's learned to use jokes to, as a way to connect. But then McKenna ran with it. She had this list of jokes that she had and we would just kick it to her. I'd be like, tell the one about the otter, tell this one, tell that one. Even when, you know, even at the end in a scene that I won't go into detail about, uh, where she's just popping them off. Um, she had so many ready to go. And she would just stop me every day on set and go, Mr. Jason. And then she would tell me a joke. That's fantastic. I I'm going to ask her about that later. <laughs> you got it. Tell her, you, ask her one of her favorite jokes that's question. not in the movie. You got it. <laughs> McKenna, Hi. Finn, pleasure to be with you today. How you doing? Yeah, pleasure. Good. So McKenna, you are very busy these days. <laughs> How did this film really stretch your acting chops and what did you get to do that was new for you in Ghostbusters Afterlife? 
Um, well, I mean, the entire thing was a totally new experience. I had never really been on, I've never been on something that is as big as this, um, as well known, as big of a franchise. Uh, but I mean, creating the character of Phoebe with Mr. Jason was something that I, like, I've, I've played my own characters. I have, like, I've, I've, I've created my own stuff. I, I've come up with it, but, like, being able to make it with Mr. Jason was really, really special. Uh, he had such a specific vision for her, and, uh, and it was beautiful, and I was really happy that I was able to figure it out and create it with him. That's awesome. Yeah, she's definitely one of my favorite characters, just <laughs> from everything to her love of science to her great jokes, which we will get to later. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Finn, you definitely got to do just a bucket list thing and getting behind the wheel of Ecto-1. Can you talk about that experience and some of the stunt work that you did with that? Yeah, it's pretty insane um, that I got to do that and that they let me do that. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I drove like a tiny bit, but, but most of the, I mean... All the driving I'm doing in it is stunt driving, and I wouldn't be able, you know, they got a stunt driver to do that. But in the uh, chase scenes, like, I'm, uh, there's a guy that's driving basically the car beside me, or above me, um, and I'm kind of matching his steering and stuff like that. Um, but it is practical, like, we all are on the car, and it's all moving, so. Um, okay. It's pretty awesome. Nice. Yeah. And McKenna, what uh, was one of your favorite jokes that didn't make it into the movie? Oh. Ooh, I can't tell that one. Oh, is it, uh, is it dirty? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> me! not actually dirty. I would never. Is no it PG-13? Way. Imagine. Um... What do you got? You want to? You want to? I cannot even. <laughs> do I what? Do you want to think about that one? Think about that one for a second. Honestly, I can like barely remember all of the jokes it I was told, like and two, I had a bit... so many. It was. Jokes. It was two years ago. <laughs> so, yeah. I hear you came with your own jokes prepared, McKenna. Oh yeah, every day. Yeah, I'd come in with a new joke. Did you ever try to write one? one? Um, probably, probably. Yeah, I, I probably remember. came up with a good couple of them. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Look, I mean that's okay if you can't oh, remember. That's totally I mean, fine. I told one. It was like, why, why? Uh, but what did the? I think that Logan actually told me that one. It was like, why did the fish get high? Because he had seaweed. Nice. So that was that was a hilarious joke. <laughs> that killed, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> was just like. And it was in the movie for what sure. What a knee slapper. <laughs> yeah. I think that is a great place to just wrap this up so oh so god yeah you're McKenna. like oh, maybe i should leave <laughs> thank you best of luck with ghostbusters afterlife thank, thank you. you so much logan celeste what a pleasure thank you hi hi so logan let's start with you i absolutely love podcasts as a character what was it like getting to jump in with all these great names and Jason as a director for a Ghostbuster film? Yeah, well, you know, coming from FedEx, it was a pretty big experience for me, uh, I'd say. Um, I never thought I would actually be in a feature film like this, so it was pretty, pretty, uh, I was pretty starstruck. But I, I learned to keep my cool, at least on the outside. Inside, I was really just terrified whenever I met everybody. Um, so, you know, I had a good time with it. Fair, good, good. And Celeste, for you, what was one of the highlights or favorite moments on set uh, during filming? One of the highlights for me, definitely, I won't give any spoilers, but at the end of the film, I get to do some of my own stunts. And that was like, that was one of the coolest things I got to do for sure. Cause I had never done a project before that was like that physical. And so getting to do stunts um, was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's awesome. You, you both do some pretty physical stunt work. Uh, Logan, what was that experience like for you? Was there a lot of training involved? I know certain 
packs maybe a little heavy. <laughs> Can you, you talk know, about that? I mean, I they strapped me to the seat and we went enjoy riding. And that was <laughs> that was my stunt work. <laughs> we went out our we went around a corner with the ecto, like a sharp turn. It was so cool, but it was also so terrifying, but I loved it. So that that was one of my highlights, I'd say, my stunt stunt work. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> And Celeste, you grew up uh, in a large town, I, Baltimore, am I correct? Yeah. So your character is in the small town of Somerville. What attributes do you think really are instilled, instilled in the character because of the small town? Yeah, I think it, it's really interesting. It was really interesting working on her because I think that Lucky feels very like, safe and and protected in her small town where she knows everybody and also her dad is the sheriff so she kind of just like does whatever she wants and gets away with a lot um and and so I think that was that was fun to play with um but definitely different than like growing up in a city um in in my personal experience got it and Logan how much freedom did you have to really flush out your character podcast because your comedic timing is spot on <laughs> and your reactions to things what kind of uh yeah yeah, yeah. Well, Tell us about that. well Jason you know he he gave me just some guidelines of who podcast is he's just this quirky curious guy who's uh, extroverted and he likes making conversation uh and he really wanted me to show my vulnerable side at, at some points in the, in the film uh and the rest he just left it to me and let me do what I do best and and act and I love comedy it's my it's my favorite type of acting uh so I, I really got to show that in the movie nice nice and will we get to hear this podcast of yours because I really want to know what happens in episode 46 well <laughs> we I, I, I would Special love to features. show you but but there is nothing to see I guess I would say there's some <laughs> things in the works I, I'll say that Okay. It was okay. just one one thing. Well, if you had your own podcast, what would it be about? Ooh, I would like to like interview just like people in general, like anywhere from any lifestyle. Just kind of figure out how what what everybody's doing, either that from be another country or just a different social um, standpoint. Nice, nice. And Celeste, if there's something from the 1984 set or even this set of Ghostbusters that you could kind of keep as your own what do you think you would take? I would definitely take a proton pack the that is the I think the coolest gadget the coolest prop by far so if I could have taken one of them I would it just didn't fit in my suitcase so (laughs) (laughs) fair (laughs) and Logan, what was the cat? You said, you know, FedEx. <laughs> what was the casting process like for you? Well, let's see. I did, I sent it. Okay. So the, the audition had the script was boy and girl. That's all it was. So I had no idea what I was doing. So I was like, okay, I just kind of want to put some comedy in here. So I, you know, I tried to make it funny as possible. And I, I got a call back and, you know, we, we just kept going down that line. And the night before the final screen test, the, you know, the final round, uh the teaser came out and we realized this is ghostbusters uh and it was bit like no pressure <laughs> yeah so we were really freaked out and i was like i need to get this and uh you know my mom was like like screaming and she called my dad and it was crazy so i love that well thank you both so much logan celeste it's been a pleasure and good luck with ghostbusters afterlife thank you very much thank you Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.